We're here in the UK at the beginning of an epic coast-to-coast -coast road trip that starts right here in the Essex town of Malden, a town famed for its salt production, but we're here to meet a man who's made it his life's work to write about, to work with, and bring some of the finest oysters England produces to some of the finest dining establishments in the whole of London, Mr. Bobby Groves. Like now for oysters. Uh, Bobby, really good to see you, man. Thanks for having us. So we are, we're here on the Blackwater Estuary, the town of Malden, Essex, where you're from. Yeah, agreed. I was born in the, in, on the hill in Malden there, and I used to work for Malden Oysters out on these racks. So Malden, most people will probably know for its salt production, but oysters are a big thing here as well. Yeah, oysters um, and the Blackwater Estuary um, and going out towards Colchester goes way back to the Roman times. Obviously, it's famous for salt as well. And all around here, you've got Tiptree Jam just down the road, and um, it's a very productive area. What possessed you to write a book on oysters? Um, a couple of things, really. I th the UK and Ireland's got some awesome, world-class oysters. And there was not a lot of modern literature on it. Um, and I wanted to add to the already sort of amazing collection of books on, on global oysters, basically. So you travelled from all around the British Isles, stopping from place to place, uh, testing the oysters, writing about the heritage? Yeah, I started here in Essex in, in, in my home and I went around the UK and Ireland. Uh, so 5,000 miles on a, on a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah, so where are we uh, right now? What does this uh, place mean to you? Uh, so this is the Malden Oyster Farm and this is where I would have started out um, working, uh, turning the bags out there and then doing work at the oyster plants. And this is really the start of the oysters' life here, um, from tide to table. So we're going to go out there and check, at the moment, some of the oyster grow bags. Yep. Learn a little bit about the oysters and then follow their whole journey, basically. Yeah, we're going to go from here, then we'll go up to the oyster plant. You'll see how the packing works, and then that's what goes off to the restaurants and arrives on the table. What have we got here? So this is very are, exciting. These are some Malden rock oysters. Uh, as you can see, this is the Pacific species that we've had here. Um, for a couple hundred years, but really since the 1960s uh, when hatchery technology took over. Um, this means that the oyster farmer doesn't need to rely on wild catch per se, um, like a native flat oyster. Yeah. So the Pacific um, is the most popular oyster in the world. Uh, it looks like an arrow, it's a point, it's got a deep cup like that. Yeah. Um, and it generally it's going to have that sort of... Um, Quite meaty texture. It's super recognisable. This is what you see most of the time when you order an oyster platter anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You see that shape, don't you? Yeah, 100%. Farmers <laughs> like to use this because it's uh, basically it's a lot less fragile than the native oyster. We're going to try one? Yeah, yeah. Klaus, are you going to try one? Yeah, he's going to try one. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a quick shuck on this one. Um, you're going to go in the hinge there like that. Um, and then you're going to separate the shell like that. Try not to lose all the water because, uh, as I said, oysters are a product of their environment and, and they filter feed uh, about 80 to 100, 100 litres a day or 30 to 50 gallons. So what, goes through one oyster? Yeah, yeah. So they, a, a mature oyster will do 80 to 100 litres or 30 to 50 gallons, thereabouts, and that's where you get the flavour of the oyster. Right. So that's what all the fuss is about. That's like, with, it's the same with wine and cheese. It's a product. It's terroir. So we say meroir with oysters because it's water. That's nice. Yeah. So once you've released the uh, oyster from the shell, you should not have a lot of meat left on there. That means you've done a good shuck. You go under the adductor muscle like that. So the adductor muscle is that little circle bit there, and that's what it's using to uh, open and close the shell when it's filter feeding. It's kind of like a, a bicep. Che do we say cheers when we're eating oysters? Yeah, you can say cheers. 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 That is an amazing oyster. Yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. Oh my God. That's really beautiful, really sweet. A bit yeah. nutty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a bit nutty. Yeah. And it's, it's not hugely salty because if it was on like the west coast of Ireland or the west coast of Scotland, you'd have like that ocean salinity, much higher salt levels. But here it's, quite, it's kind of a delicate brackish taste. Okay, so shocking. This is terrifying for me, mate, because normally I'd have, I'd at least have two towels so I don't. Do you know what I mean? 
So I'm going into the hinge. Yep, hinge. And you want the knife. Two inches. Uh, two, no, two, about two millimetres. Two millimetres. Yeah, like the, the tip of the knife. Get, get, just jam in and chisel in. And then slide round and scoop at the same time. Ah. C'est bon. Yeah, it's like a flat um, scoop. What a bodge job. I, uh, a little bodge That's job. Right. As long as you get the shell off. <laughs> I've eaten the shell. This for me. Would I get a job on your uh, oyster? <laughs> <laughs> Would I get a job on the oyster cart? You, yeah, you, you'd have a bit of training down in Borough Market for a bit, and then you'd, then you'd get the job. Not the, not like that. Mm, I mean, that's, awesome. that's for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to eat that. When you turn it over, it does make it look yeah. a little bit better, doesn't it? So I'm going to drink some of the liquor first. Prepare my palate, and then whack it in and chew it. Make sure you chew, it's the most important thing. I quite like the idea of drinking the liquor as well. Like, that's tasting the terroir first and foremost, isn't it? Yeah. The terroir. That was incredible. So good. Thank you. Let's go and have a look at the uh, growing. Mm -hmm. I've literally always wanted to see this. This is amazing. So this is it. Yeah, this is an oyster farm. Um, these are trestles, um, and then they've got the bags on top. This is kind of a French aquaculture technique. And the majority uh, of oysters, I guess, in the UK is, is generally this technique. Um, and so, yeah, these are all rock oysters in these bags. So this is amazing to see. So we're right now at low tide. The tide comes up daily and just covers all of these, correct? Yeah, exactly. So you've got different sized oysters in different sized bags. You can see these holes here. Through there. These ones are almost market ready. Um, further down into the water, you're going to have smaller oysters in uh, with a smaller mesh bag. So the young ones stay in the water. It generally, school of school of thought is that the young ones stay in the water longer, so they get longer time to feed and grow. Right. And the bigger ones, as they get more towards market size, which is around the hundred gram mark, depending on which size you're selling, um, they will come up the beach. And also staying out of the water longer gives them a chance to grow a harder shell. How long does it take them to grow to a size that's marketable? So native oysters, which we don't have here, but native uh, take ages, they're about four, five years to get to market size. A rock oyster oh, really? generally is around the two, two year, two and a half year mark, two, three. Um, and different things make them grow faster or slower. How many oysters would come from just here, Molden, what's their kind of uh, production? So Molden take about um, half, a, half a million off the beach each year, give or take. Yeah, oysters produce a, a huge amount of um, eggs each summer uh, when they go creamy. And so it's a very sustainable um, food source, high protein, uh, low environmental impact. You know, the farm is not doing anything. They're just putting the oyster out here. Um, nature is feeding it. It's feeding on the nutrients and the phytoplankton in the estuary, and that's coming from the sun, ultimately. You're not putting fish feed in here or anything like that. And just after a couple of years, take it off the beach, send it up to market. So it's a super ecological way of yeah. farming fish, yeah, unlike some fish farming. Yeah, agreed. Right, so it, on a number of levels, oysters are not just delicious to eat, but utterly important for the conservation of the local environment. Yeah. You could say? Yeah, 100%. It's good for economy, it's good for our health. You know, it's full of zinc, full of omega-3, um, lots of protein in this, low calories, and great for the environment. So uh, watch out for the future because this is going to be a hugely important thing. What's all the bezel about oysters being good for uh, your sex life? Is that, yeah. is that the zinc? There's always a couple of points to mention on that. Uh, is this a load of bollocks? Well, first, it's three things I'm going to say. Uh, firstly, Aphrodite came out of the water on an oyster shell in mythology, and, and the ancient Greeks knew a lot more than we did about certain things. Right. Um, secondly, you've got the high zinc, so that's obviously our um, immune system, and um, it's libido and sperm count as well. And then there's also strong links with dopamine as well, um, oysters containing dopamine and um, promoting the happy hormone. Oh, really? So You've got three things. You've got nutrition there, you've got mythology, and you've also got um, you know, science. So as an old raver, 
Now I can move <laughs> on in life, and instead of uh, the ecstasy, we can just eat oysters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Next, we're about to go and see something which I'm pretty sure hasn't been seen before on a food show. We're going to go and actually see the purification tanks to end our journey from tide to table. Correct. Amazing. Thank you for showing us this. You're most welcome. It's a bon. Three. <laughs> Final part of the process from tide to table, the purification tanks. Yeah, so these big tanks hold uh, litres and litres of water and the oysters come up from the beach and this is where they get purified, where they filter through ozone and UV light and that prepares them for the restaurant and then they go from here, packing, van and onto your table. Or onto your uh, oyster truck. Or onto the oyster car. So we're out to try our final oyster, this has been amazing, thanks. Most welcome. Full of meat. Oh man, look Absolutely at that. Stunning. That's primo. That is a really, really meaty, beautiful, perfect oyster, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's incredible. World class. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers, guys. I started this book with a bustling Victorian street scene, and at the heart of that scene was an oyster, enjoyed by and sustaining the whole of society. It has been a great leveller, simply by giving people of all ages, races, creeds, colours and classes a lot of pleasure. Maybe, just maybe, we're seeing the beginning of such an appreciation of the oyster once again. I'll raise my glass, clink my shell, and slurp to the glorious oyster. Well, if Bobby Groves is the king of the Essex oyster, we're about to travel 350 miles in that direction to meet the man that is the king of wood-fired cooking on the Cornish coast. Like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss next week's episode. See you then. Join us for an epic road trip. Walla. Well, uh...